Next on is uh, Dr. Munir Niazi from uh, Toledo Heart and Vascular. And he's going to talk about, oh, I'm sorry, Nazi, uh, on uh, nasals from, uh, and he's going to speak on uh, laser laterectomy. Sorry about that. No, I like the name, actually, from Munir the Nazal. beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Kept quiet about it. <laughs> Good morning, and thank you again for allowing me to participate in this great symposium. Um, I'm going to talk about laser atherectomy. I mean, if I change the title of the previous lecture and I put laser in before it, it will be the same everything almost. So a little bit about what is laser. So laser is a light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So it is a type of energy, but it depends on light. <coughs> the only difference between it and other sources of light that it is very focused <coughs> and it is coherent. It can... Uh, transmit itself for a long distance without changing or focus is going to be the same. So this is the type, the, the ordinary light and this is the laser light goes in the same direction without being dispersed. So it, per, uh, it reserves and preserves its energy. And there are different types of light uh, with laser. The one we use a lot actually in uh, the lower extremities or in the vessels in general is the low uh, light, which is the ultraviolet light. But in the past, we used others like, such as the uh, YAG laser. So the absorption of energy here is the mechanism. And instead of mechanical uh, destruction or removal of the plaque here, energy goes in the area, cause changes that will cause actually the plaque to be debulked. And the, the excimer, which is the one that's mostly used now, it has arterial plaque, absorbs about 308 nanometer of light. The calcium is resistant to that. Just keep that in mind. Um, the excimer laser, different than the other streets at the tip, like jet stream, it does at the tip. And the only one with indication for instant restenosis so far, and it has a directional control. This is an example of the laser uh, that's used. How does it work? So the excimer laser typically combines an inert gas and then produces a reaction. The electrical stimulation produces what we call excimer, which is a pseudomolecule that will generate ultraviolet laser light. This ultraviolet laser light goes at about 300 nanometer and electrically change the xenon and chloride. And this is the energy where it is formed. And it does affect, in this case, the light which comes ablates the cholesterol. So we call it photoablation. So instead of mechanically ruining or removing the plaque, we are actually doing photoablation. So it divulgues the lesion, prepares the lesion for further treatment, so it is not a final treatment, and it's supposed to limit the damage of the artery like all other atherectomies and even the new ones that are coming. It might work better in calcified lesion, less damage, but there's no proof really for that. There's no good proof. This is the way it works. It works by photochemical, photothermal, and photomechanical. So it combines multiple ways of working in order to do ablation. So it leverages the three mechanisms of action to vaporize the full spectrum of the morphologies in the lesion. There are two different types of the excimer. We will not go through them, one for smaller, one larger vessels, and this is an example, actually this is from the company, a vessel, then you do the excimer, dilate it, and that's what you get the result. As you can see, you have to dilate at the end of the procedure. Now, this is why we're using laser. So do we have any proof that it works? So laser is nothing new, really. In, from the eight, 60s was actually um, uh, described. In the 80s and 90s, started to be used in vascular. For example, this is in 1995, uh, an abstract, and it shows that there is a clinical success, that you can use laser to open the vessel. And most of those lesions were less than 10 centimeter, 44 percent of the lesions longer than 10 centimeter. That was an abstract. Actually, we published the first paper about laser and the YAG laser in 1998, believe it or not. We tried it on about 33 uh, patients with 34 limbs. Um, patient done between 1989 and 1991, and we followed them for 9.9 months, up to 30 months total. Generally, about um, 40 or about 50 or less patients improved, but remained symptomatic. 38% became asymptomatic. 
and 9.7% had no symptom change, two patients worsened. So what we did, we did the anti-YAG laser, which is a different mechanism of action, and then we did balloon after that. Most of the legions we used at that time were smaller legions, about four or a little bit more than that. So we concluded that it can be used, but it's really diff not different than any balloon. So we dropped that at that time. So there are other studies now uh, talking about uh, uh, laser. Uh, for example, this is study which was published 2002 uh, that the initial recanalization may, may be better with laser and balloon angioplasty, but it does not appear to add anything for the long-term effect. The LIPS study was one of the larger studies that came in 2015, and this is from 726 patients. This is a retrospective study, and uh, all those patients underwent laser-assisted balloon angioplasty, and some of them got actually balloon angioplasty, 300 versus 395. From a single center, the only difference you see that this was a, a little bit higher with the laser, but you don't know why, everything was the same really. There was no difference in uh, major amputation, median, so it did not add much this study uh, using laser to just using balloon angioplasty. Another abstract that was published in 2013 uh, used laser angioplasty, and all procedure had balloon angioplasty, stinting was performed 33% only. Again, it showed some technical success, um, and had minor amputation, 5%, major amputation, 9%. If you think actually compare it to other devices, this is within the scope of other devices. Then the LACI study in uh, 2006, which is uh, done to evaluate effectiveness of laser balloon angioplasty in critical limb ischemia. Again, procedure success, 83%. I want to warn everybody really, procedure success for somebody who is uh, ex experience in any procedure, 83% is low. Although it is, it says, I mean, if my procedure 83% in balloon angioplasty, I will not do balloon angioplasty. I'll stop do something else. Limb salvage rate, 93%. Again, I want to warn everybody, limb salvage doesn't mean anything really nowadays. In limb salvage, it is, depends what definition you use. All patients received adjunct balloon angioplasty. 45% of the patient had stent implantation, so it did not stop the stem. So the primary patency at 12 months was 75%. Again, this is not different from other studies. Then we have the salvage registry or study almost showing the same results, but these patients have instant restenosis. They were all uh, enrolled in the study. The legions were about task C and D, so longer legions. So all the legions were pretreated with chimeral laser. Then balloon angioplasty was done then Viaban was used in those patients. So balloon angioplasty and Viaban here. Technical success was 100%, that looks good. Uh, amputation not much, sorry, major uh, complication not much in 30 years. Patency 12 months, 48%, month, uh, 48%. that's again low. Improvement the quality of life parameters, 12 months, uh, TLR was 17.4%. Again, that's not very much different from other material. Then we have a smaller randomized study Again, using debulking, 24, uh, using uh, drug-eluting balloon with laser or drug-eluting balloon only, small study, 24 in each. The comparison was the TLR at 12 months was 16.7 versus 50. But if you recall, for drug-eluting balloon, TLR 50 is very high, really. That is not reproducible in many other studies. Patency at six months was better with the laser, but again, this is very low for uh, drug-eluting balloons. And the limb salvage was, not, um, was 91 versus 54, and I could not find a good explanation <coughs> other than patency of the vessels in this study. This is the largest study published in 2015. It's a randomized study to evaluate the efficacy of Eximer um, in patient with in-stent restenosis, multi-center prospective randomized study. This is the strength of the study. 40 center were ins included. A pilot channel was created if necessary with turbo lead, then turbo tandem was used to create a larger channel. And then after that, you do balloon angioplasty, others. Most of the patient actually, they have class one to four, so they are clodicans only. Remember that. The second thing, the angiographical inclusion criteria were based on visual assessment 
and we did a study actually convert visual assessment of us and other colleagues and then we went and measured the, uh, the real stenosis was completely different in about 56% of the cases. Stenosis within previously deployed femoropabletal stent target lesion more than four centimeter. Minimum of one TBL vessel is open. These are the criteria. And it was a two, one, two allocation for laser versus no laser. There was more calcification in the group with no laser. And if you see, there was actually better or improvement residual stenosis in the patient had laser. And uh, the section was lower in patient with laser. And the other thing, uh, bait <coughs> out stinting procedure TLR were better with patient with laser. And these are important results. And uh, the important variables to contribute to that was the length of the lesion is one of them. Calcification was not sure, but in general, um, it is like any, the longer the legions, the worse is the result. And then if you look at the length of the legion and com uh, compare laser versus no laser, the longer the legion, the better the, la uh, the laser in these cases. So these are the studies. What is the summary, if you look at it? First of all, most of them looked at the success of the procedure. Some compared to balloon angioplasty. All had additional procedure. There are none of them without additional procedure. Stinting, cover the stint, or drug diluting balloon. Stinting ranged as a bailout procedure from 33% to 100%, but the 100% was by design. And then treated de novo lesion or instant stenosis. Calcification was not measured <laughs> and compared in any of those studies really to compare, but it was inference, so they looked at it in the retrospect. 12 months patency was 48% to 75%. Legion restenosis 12 months, again from 16.7 to 21.2%. So if you look at the different SFA trials, the results are not very much different, better than the bare stents, but they are not much different or even uh, a little better with the uh, Zilvar PTX uh, than the laser, if you look uh, carefully at the study. Is there it is a debulking procedure, a therectomy. Is there a comparison between this laser and any other debulking? Of course, there is no uh, good study or any study to compare them. But the inferences come from different studies. So no studies, but comparing those results, but there are different studies. So in conclusion, it is an alternative option to prepare vessel for the treatment. Uh, in instant restenosis, best to benefit from laser, according to the different studies, better than other procedures. Actually, the others, atherectomy, are not indicated for them. Calcification might not be a predictor. We don't have a good study to say it is really a predictor. No direct comparative study with other atherectomy devices or drug eluting stem. Results controversial, but seems to improve TLR, restenosis, and dissection, because like other uh, materials, it improved the debulking, decreased the balloon uh, strength. Thank you very much. <clears throat>